So, you want to start a company, you've thought of a great name for the company, and now what you want to register the company. Which way should you go? Should you go the sole prop way or sole proprietor? Or should you register it as a Sundran Berhad? Okay, so maybe I'll just try to outline to you uh, the differences, uh, some of the things that you should be aware of, and maybe some of the costs, and then you can decide. The first thing about sole prop is that it's very easy to start up, right? And basically the definition of it is that you are the business. It's a one-person business, right? So some people who, let's say, open a provision shop, a convenience store, and you know you want to have something simple, you just want to register that you're a business and you're paying taxes and so forth, it's a good start, sole proprietor, right? Now, a Sandra and Berha, on the other hand, is that you, you know, it is a separate entity. A company is a company. You are you. So what is the main difference? Number one, the biggest difference is liability, okay? Now, if you register as a sole proprietor and you are doing business and let's say um, you are, okay, let's say you sell camera batteries, okay? And you're selling camera batteries and some schmuck, I don't know, he uses it, you know, the, the batteries that you manufacture, right? And the batteries explode. He's going to come after you. Uh, luckily, he survives. Let's say uh, he survives, right? He will come after you and you are screwed because he will come after you personally, directly because you sold it to you, manufactured. You are the business and he can come after, he can sue you for everything you've got. In other words, huh, you are f***ed, okay? You'll never be able to climb up if it's your fault. Now, apart from the obvious that you should, you know, obviously manufacture better batteries and so forth, if you are, let's say, part of the company, Sandra and Berhad, right? at least if they sue, they sue the company, you are still intact. Now, you may lose the case, right? You know, for all you know, okay, fine. Or you might fight it or you might lose the case or whatever, but at least it's just the company. Your, your, your family is intact. You are intact, right? You can walk away, start another company and so forth. So I think when you talk about the main difference is liability. Number two, of course, is cost. So Pro is very cheap. You can register in SSM. I think the start of the first year is at 90 ringgit, if I'm not wrong. And um, you can pretty much renew it every year for like 60 ringgit. Very cheap, right? Now, to register for a Sunan Berhad, it will cost you a couple of thousand ringgit. And it's also an incurring fee every year to pay for, let's say, secretarial fees and also, of course, your accounting fees and so forth. And it's quite high. It's quite substantial, right? So if you are a small company and you're just testing out something, you're just trying out, maybe for so prop first. But you should aim for Sundram Berhad if you are planning to grow, right? Because of the liability. I won't say the protection, but the liability and issues around it, okay? Now, another thing you also need to think about is that if it depends on what kind of company or kind of business you do, if you are doing solely very simple B2C stuff, you know, selling small items, you know, doing small stuff, you can start with sole prop. Now, if you are doing mostly, let's say, project-related work, like uh, B2B stuff, where, for example, you want to, let's say, do a campaign or, you know, deliver a software or create a software for a company where potentially the cost goes up to hundreds of thousands of ringgit. If you're sole prop, the company, their procurement, whatever, will look at you and they are kind of not sure. They're like, you know, one person, he might just leave. I'm not sure whether he can deliver and so forth. Although it may not be true, it is just a perception, right? Whereas sometimes they will look at, okay, this is a Sundram Berhad. They've been around for three or four years. They seem pretty stable. These are their clients, you know. Then, okay, who are the directors and so forth? It gives a slightly better perception. Not all the time, but people do look at things like that. So it depends also on your clientele and the kind of customers you want to attract and the kind of customers you are dealing with. So there is a difference there. B2B, definitely, corporates, they will look at at least minimum a Sundaram Berhad for bigger projects. But if you talk about simple, uh, simple freelance work, like, you know, maybe just coming up with a website for them or maybe coming up with a video or coming up with a simple local design or so forth, I think it's fine. So whichever way you choose or whichever one that you choose, so prop or Sundaram Berhad, it really depends on the kind of business that you do. My concern, obviously, is liability. Number two is that, of course, the cost. Uh, it's expensive. However, when you think about St. John Berhad, you must think of it like it is a somewhat like an insurance policy, so to speak. 
So, short and sweet, the difference between sole proprietor and basically St. John Berhad and which direction your company wants to take. Now, if you have any questions, uh, leave it down on the comment section below and um, maybe I'll do another video or maybe I'll just reply straight away. Uh, as usual, if you enjoyed watching today's video, consider subscribing, give us a thumbs up and also to hit that bell and I will see you in the next one. Ciao.